So hi, I'm Jess from Extreme Hangout and today we're hanging out with Elsie Gabriel, the founder of Young Environmentalist Program Trust and the founder of Ocean School India, coming all the way from the Global South. And Tanya Gabriel Satish from India Global South, representing Creed Entertainment, Young Environmentalist and Ocean School India. Amazing. And my first question to you is, what is one thing you think everyone should understand about climate change? I think the one thing is that everyone should uh, realize about climate uh, changes. Um, climate action is key, actually, and to put ocean on the top of the agenda because it is necessary. Um, like Sylvia Earle said, without blue, there's no green. So we need to put the oceans. I am also um, the UNESCO Green Citizen. Our project uh, on ocean literacy and knowledge, especially in the global south, is key to understanding climate change and climate action. And then we need to give the ocean and conservation um, priority. So for us um, at Creed Entertainment, what we do is we push the youth. So for young environmentalists and the Ocean School, the youth is given a stage, it's given a voice and it's given a position to voice out and be pragmatic and also make sure that we are consistent with our vision. So yes. And what is your hope between now and the next COP? What steps do you want to see being taken? I think this COP29 here in Baku is tagged as uh, the finance COP, the funding COP. So we're hoping that um, more underprivileged nations and the global south, especially where I represent all the way from India and the Lakshadweep Islands, Andaman Islands and the coasts of India. And uh, we're asking that um, more uh, you know, funding be uh, given to the Global South and it reaches the underprivileged who really need it and also gets a, a senior citizens who lead such projects on the ground, at site. I mean, just not scientists, but also citizen scientists have a role to play and they be brought to the table and given funding so that, uh, you know, it's just not all talk. Now we need to put our money where our mouth is, literally at COP29. <laughs> Uh, for us, us, again, it's all about the youth. We are giving uh, the youth a chance and a stage to basically voice out and you know be strong and ask for funding. It's very important because funding is also what COP is about. They're here to listen to you, and if we don't voice it out right now, we're just gonna you know not you know go ahead. So what we have to do is be strong and come together, be consistent, and voice our opinions and fight for the funding and come together as a community and uh, be one together and excel. And what is one small step you think everyone at home can take to become more sustainable or drive action? I think sustainable living it becomes like charity begins at home. So I think your sustainable living programs begin right in your backyard, right from behind your kitchen door. In fact, stop using plastics, do your plastic audits at home. Plastics is the biggest menace, which in, you know pollutes our oceans. And we can go on cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. In fact, it's become fashionable now for beach cleaning. But what about getting to the source of the plastic pollution? And when you pick up plastics, don't forget the signs of segregation. and get to people who are you know polluting with the plastics so it's important to take action with the plastic that you can you know collect and i think um, ocean pollution and plastic eradication is the key to uh, again uh, ocean conservation which is a huge part of climate action thank you so for us again uh, we try and promote many things one of which is cycling. So we try and promote uh, cycling to school, cycling to college, and cycling to work. That's zero emission. And uh, there are lots of other projects that we do with the youth and together. But uh, one of the major projects are also single-use plastics that we incorporate, that they go back and they teach their family how to, again, you know, go back to their you know, roots and you know, hopefully make Earth a greener place. <laughs> Perfect. And my final question is, in one word, and I know that you've just kind of arrived to Extreme Hangout, how would you describe our space and your experience here? Blue. As simple as that. Blue. So Extreme Hangout is really special for us because it has given Creed Entertainment a chance 
to come here, be here at the COP and just represent ourselves in all the visions that we have for Mother Earth here at COP29. So thank you, Extreme Hangout. Thank you guys. Oh, that was perfect. Love it. So Eleanor, we've uh, launched this book, The Wave of Knowledge, Ocean Literacy for All the Islanders. So we'd love to give you know a copy to whenever we meet. And tell us about your next meeting that you're going to have. I want everyone to be part of the island innovation. And uh, we have registration open to join your St. Kitts uh, Caribbean event, right? Tell us more about that. Absolutely. So every year we organize the Global Sustainable Island Summit. Um, in a different island in a different part of the world. This year was in Prince Edward Islands, Canada, and next year will be taking place in St. Kitts and Nevis in the Eastern Caribbean. And we're inviting island, small island developing states, but also islands of all uh, types and uh, from all over the world to participate. We would love to have representation from the Indian Islands, of course, if we can, uh, to join us in the Caribbean in St. Kitts and Nevis for a discussion on island sustainability. And so you can find more information about that on our website. Our organization is Island Innovation and the event is the Global Sustainable Island Summit. Excellent, fabulous. And during that summit, I don't know if we're gonna have some time. We just need a few hours and we'd love to train those you select, maybe a lucky draw, and sponsor some of them to get certified in the HSA USA certification. Fantastic. So we'll you can that. choose uh, the lucky few and have like a kind of interactive, um, you know, get all of them to compete over some disaster management quiz or online, and you can choose, and we can have 10 of them. And of course, the underprivileged are absolutely supported and funded by us. So if you do get indigenous um, underprivileged community who want to join the certification, it's absolutely sponsored by PHSA. And then your lucky five will, 10 will be part of Island Innovation HSA certified divers, and you'll lead in that. And hopefully we can get you to the water gyms. Are you a diver? Fantastic. I am. My party says Oh, so fantastic. While, so you are going to be definitely to get certified by us. And go back here, yes. Yeah, and in Lakshadweep, we also have surfers. We have a lot of surfers um, who are like surfing for conservation, ocean conservation. So I would love to have even the surfers on board as agents of change. And that makes it exciting for the young adults, actually, you know, really. So if we get surfers team and we have surfers for sewage, in fact, and surfers for, um, you know, conservation. So we can have a surfers session. That'd be fantastic. Lakshadweep is a hot spot for surfing as well. And I do work with the Lakshadweep Surfing um, Club. So we could do a session on that as well. And then we could do a, a session on the divers as well. And uh, I could, uh, we gotta make it happen. That's it's an really, absolute dream really. of mine to visit So Lakshadweep, go ahead so and while we can, I think I'd like you to invite globally since this is going live. So uh, invite them to your Looking session once summit. more. Thank you. Thank Go you. ahead, invite them once more. Come, come to the come Global come. Sustainable Island oh, Summit in St. Kitts and Nevis, taking place in May of next year. We're inviting islanders from all over the world, and we look forward to having a great representation from Lakshadweep and islands far beyond. So Eleanor has been, uh, you know, pioneering. Um, I think it's uh, just beautiful, one of a kind getting all the islands globally under one roof. That's a fantastic tribute to uh, SIDS as well as the islands all over the world. And he has got, how many members now do you have? So we have an open membership structure so anyone can follow us. Um, so I'm the CEO, James Ellsmore of Island Innovation. We have an open membership structure. You can follow us on social media. Uh, we have uh, thousands of people that follow our weekly newsletter where we report on sustainable development for island communities. Uh, we have a virtual event every September for the Virtual Island Summit, which this year we had 10,000 island stakeholders, again, from all over the world. Um, and we really try and do that in a structure where we discuss topics such as sustainable tourism, renewable energy, um, food security, all topics at the heart um, of needs for all island communities with this philosophy that every island is very unique, very different, but of course there are many core commonalities and challenges that connect them. And so we can have use the virtual platform to have examples from all over the world and share that knowledge um, to help progress and improve quality of life for the people living there. Thank you so much, James. And it's Thank been so a pleasure being an ambassador for Island Innovation. And I invite everyone globally to attend this. 
and join the Ireland Innovation Membership Program and take this forward because without blue there's no green like Sylvia Earl said and the ocean is a hot spot and needs all the funding financing as well as um, a higher up in the stakes that we need to focus more on oceans because it is the largest carbon sinks that's the forests of the world the corals the reefs are the underwater ocean forests so therefore we need to bring the agenda of uh, the oceans to the forefront Thank you so much, James. Thank Lovely you. having you here. What he's asking for COP29 this year. James, Thank you so much for, having so you much for coming to Extreme Hangout today and joining the Young Environmentalists and being with us here today. Thank Tell you. us. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we're here focusing on the needs of island communities. Um, and so our delegation has brought us uh, together a youth delegation to the Caribbean region and organized various events focused on the needs of small island developing states and subnational island jurisdictions really to focus on the needs that they have when it comes to COP, which is really focused on climate adaptation uh, and financing of climate adaptation. Um, how successful have your first four days been here at COP29? Oof, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, COP is always uh, difficult to know. I'm less involved in the negotiations. We're supporting uh, more on the civil society and the subnational governments. Uh, so less directly involved in the big negotiation rooms. Um, and I always find that with negotiations, you never really know what success looks like until the end of COP anyway. Uh, but it's been a really important space for bringing together islands from disparate parts of the world to learn from each other, uh, collaborate, and share their needs. And that's the amazing thing about COP, that you have all these different regions represented. Fabulous. I've been an ambassador for Island Innovation, I mean, five years ago. And it's been wonderful following their journey together. And of course, we are planning on putting Lakshadweep Islands and uh, Andaman Islands of India, the Global South, on with the um, SIDs that he's working with. Uh, India is not part of the SIDs, but we bear the same brunt and the same calamities and the ocean disasters. So we're going to get that um, agenda on island innovation. So I'm so glad, um, uh, you know, James, that you've been leading the youth contingent. I mean, they need to be part of the policy. They need to be, be brought to the table. And they need, what is your comment? I mean, this COP is COP, dubbed as uh, COP Finance COP. So um, more of the youth organizations and, uh, you know, uh, uh, NGOs led by the youth and the young adults. Uh, you've been working with them. So how many have you brought to the COP? That's beautiful. And um, what about their funding? I mean, that's always the challenge, as you say, the funding aspects. Um, we, this year, uh, had funding for eight people. Uh, very important that we had two um, for personal reasons that were not able to come. But six of us, uh, six who joined this year, from Aruba, Dominica, Trinidad and Tobago, um, uh, to Bermuda, um, and other parts of the Caribbean. So a range of parts of the Caribbean, which is really exciting to have those islands represented. And uh, very important for them and these are the future leaders of those islands and often these islands have their, even their governments have a very small representation here because of the past issues so actually they really depend on you to help get the word out and help to support their government representations um, in addition to the small island states that are parties to the UNFCCC there are the certain national island regions so overseas territories um, and that's why I think it's interesting with the work that you do in La Kedwi and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These are subnational regions that have very different climate realities to the mainland states, let's say. And so we're currently putting together a coalition of these islands, territories, and regions that are not SIDS but have the same challenges to bring them together to look at what the climate finance needs for these non SIDS islands, regions. It includes Zanzibar, it includes Bermuda, it includes Tasmania, a whole wide range of islands uh, on the front lines of climate change. So I watched you rise from milestone to milestone over the years, great leadership there. And I must tell you, I'm on the board of directors for PHSA, that's the Poseidon Handicap Scuba. Today we have with us at our roundtable discussion also the course director, Major Mark Rauch. But I'm also HSA certified, which is Handicap Scuba Association. And we'd love to collaborate with Island Innovation in training your divers, your islanders, 
uh, all parts of the world in disaster management and making divers agents of change. I mean, the divers know their backyard, back to the marine biodiversity at the back of their hands. So therefore, I, as the CEO of Young Environmentalists and um, Ocean School India, we focus on ocean literacy, where knowledge is key. And we ask the divers and islanders to really lead as um, a powerhouse of knowledge because they know the biodiversity, the marine biodiversity. So like for all your islands under island innovation, we offer to collaborate with you and train them, train the divers um, on a special USA HSA certification, which can make them part of the disaster management of their island or the coastal area, even if they're in the cities. I mean, to support the islanders, all right? So that'd be a great collaboration. And I think that's so important because for many islanders, the economic opportunities, especially related to tourism, often come from ocean literacy, being able to access that. And so what's the case in many tourism-driven islands is that the economic opportunities from scuba, from um, uh, uh, delivering, let's say, services related to the sea have not been accessible because the local skills have not been present. And so those higher paying jobs go to people who come in from the outside to take them. And so giving those skills and access to those allows people to also take those economic benefits and get higher paying jobs related to the ocean. So we really put the blue economy um, at the core and connecting islanders to the blue economy. It used to be that there were two different conversations happening. It was save the oceans and protect the islands. Um, but now those two different groups are coming together um, and obviously that needs to be that islanders themselves are in the room when we're talking about protecting the ocean. Excellent.